So this is Mrs. Robertson and today we're going to do lesson four located on page 891 of chapter 12. So this is chapter 12, lesson four, page 891. It says, the distribution of a set of data shows the arrangement of data values. The words below show some of the ways the distribution of data can be described. Now you need to match the word with the meaning, okay? Now I like to look at the definition and then go find the, the word that means the definition. So I'm gonna start with this one. The left side of the distribution looks like the right side. Kids, that's called symmetry. So you're gonna draw a line here. When the left side looks like the right side, it's symmetrical. The numbers that have no data value, that's a gap. If you don't have anything in it, it's called a gap. So the, the numbers that have no data value. So you know when we did the histogram and it was empty, that could be referred to as a gap. The most frequently occurring values or mode. Which word do you think would go with the mode? Yes, the peak. That's correct. And now we know the last one. Data that are grouped closely together is a cluster. Okay? Any questions? Do you all have your lines drawn for the vocabulary? Okay. Now, it says draw a vertical... Let's go down to number one in our real world link. Draw a vertical line through the middle of the data. What do you notice? Okay, this is the middle. Oh, what do you notice, kids? It's symmetrical, yes. The left side looks like the right side. It's a match. Left side matches right side. And we know the word for that is, it's sim it has symmetry. Use, oh, use one of the words shown above to write a sentence about the data. Well, you could say it is symmetrical. You could say there are no gaps. I'm going to say there are no gaps. Yep, there are, every number has something above it, doesn't it? Now, you could say other things about that to make it true, Okay. Any questions? Let's turn to page 892. Describe the shape of, shape of the distribution. Okay, now this is pretty easy to do. Data that are evenly distributed between the left side and the right side are symmet or, excuse me, have a symmetric distribution. Put your thumbs up if you remember what that is from the other page they match. If the left side matches the right side, good. Some of you don't know that when the left side matches the right side, it's symmetric. Do you not get that? Okay, good. The distribution shown here has a cluster of several data, data values. This is a cluster here. Within the intervals 10 to 12, they, they're grouped together. And then we have gaps. The gaps of 9 and 13 have no data values. And the value 10 is a peak because it is the most frequently occurring value. Does everyone understand those four terms? Everyone understands what symmetric looks like, what a cluster is, what a gap would be, gaps, gaps, and a peak. Okay, good. I thought you all knew the definitions of those words. So let's look at example one. Describe the shape of each distribution. All right, here's what they said. The first thing you notice is the gap. You can use clusters, gaps, peaks, outliers, and symmetry to describe the shape. The shape of the distribution is not symmetric. There is a gap and there's a cluster, okay? There are no outliers and the peak. 
See how easy it is to describe this? In math, I think sometimes it's easier to describe things in math than it is in literature. It's obvious in math. It's like gap, peak, cluster, not symmetric. I mean, all of those things, it's like it's so easy you don't think I should even ask you something like this. But that's what it's all about. Thumbs up. Can you all look at data and talk about it like this? Thumbs up. Okay. Number two. The box plot shows the number of visitors to a gift shop in one month. Now, you cannot identify gaps. You can't. You cannot, with the box plot, you can't identify gaps, peaks, or clusters. No. Each box and whisker has the same length. So you do know that the data is evenly distributed. I could draw a line right here and it would match. So it's symmetric. So on a box plot, you can tell if it's symmetric. There are, and there are no outliers. Okay? But you don't know the specifics. Here, in this one, it's very specific. So you can see gaps and clusters. And um, you can tell the peak. Here you can't. Now let's go to letter A. Here we have a histogram. Use clusters, gaps, peaks, outliers, and symmetry to describe the shape of the distribution at the right. Okay. In this one here, are there any gaps? Well, it says the shape of the distribution. Let's first start. Is it symmetrical? No. It's not symmetrical. Okay. It says there is a cluster from 01 to 730. So this is considered a cluster. I almost would have just considered the cluster here. But the book considers it all the way to theirs because it goes up quite a bit. So there is a cluster. And the cluster goes from 01 to 7.30. There is a peak. What's the peak, kids? The peak time. It's on the left side. It's from this. The peak I, P -E -A, I put in an extra letter. The peak is 01 to 230. It's not symmetrical. Cluster, peak. There are no gaps and no outlier. No gaps and no outlier. So we answered all of the questions there. Any questions? Okay, now let's go to page 893. Measures of center and spread. Well, the measures of center are mean, median, and mode, and the measures of spread are range and interquartile range, okay? So, use the following flow chart to decide which measure of center and spread are most appropriate to describe a data distribution. Okay, here we go. When do you say it? Is the data distribution symmetric? Use the mean to describe the center. Use the mean absolute deviation to describe the spread. Kids, you're not going to need to know that information. Okay, you just need to know use the mean to describe the center. Now, Use the median to describe the center. So when it's not symmetric, you use the median and you use the interquartile range to describe the spread. Okay? Now let's go on to number three. The line plot shows the number of states visited by students in a class. Okay? Choose the appropriate measure to describe the center and spread of the distribution. Okay, when you have an outlier, what do you choose? The median. Um, it's not symmetric and there's an outlier, so you're going to choose the median. And it says the data are not symmetric and there is an outlier. The median and interquartile range are appropriate measures to use. We're not going to really focus on the measure of spread so much on this, kids. 
In part B, write a few sentences describing the center and spread of the distribution using the appropriate measures. Well, the median is 12 states, and then they went in and found the first and, sec the first and third quartile, but the main thing is 12 states. Okay, let's look at the next one in letter B. Ooh, which one are you going to choose? Just by looking at it, you know you're going to choose what? Yes. Symmetrical. It's symmetrical. So we are going to choose the mean. That's right. And that's the main thing I want you to know. When it's symmetrical, you're going to choose the mean. Let's go on to page 894. It says the histogram shows the wait times in minutes for entering a concert. Describe the shape and the distribution, the shape of the distribution. Well, it's not symmetrical, is it? No. So the first thing, not symmetrical. What else can I talk about it? Yes, uh, let's see, Owen. And we have an outlier. Um, we have an outlier interval. We don't know the exact outlier, but we have an outlier interval. Do you understand we don't know the exact number, but we know it's in between 90 to 99. What else do you see here? Yes. It has a what? Gap. It has a gap. See how easy it is to describe this? The gap is from 50 to 89. Okay, what else do you see? I see one other thing in particular. Yes. It has a peak. Oh, there's one more after that. Our peak is 20 to 29. What else do we have? We have a, a cluster. 20, thank you, 2, 29. And our cluster is from 0 to 49. Any questions on how easy it was to just describe that one? Okay, let's look at number two. The box plot shows the weights and pounds of several dogs. Describe the shape of the data. Okay, well here we know there is what in this problem? An outlier. The outlier is 20. Is it symmetrical? It's not symmetrical. We don't know if there's a gap, do we? And you can't tell if there's a peak, can you? That's about all that we can really do. We can do these two, but you can't determine anything else, can you? All right, let's go to number three. Here we have another line plot. Choose the appropriate measures to describe the center and spread. Okay, what are we going to use? Yes. It's symmetrical, so what do you use when it's symmetrical? The mean. We're going to choose the mean because it's symmetrical. Yep, the left side matches the right side, doesn't it? We're not going to do part B here on this. Any questions on that? Okay, now what are we going to do for homework tonight? What I would like for you to do, um, I want you to do number one, number two, and number three, don't do the spread, just use the measure of center and justify your response. And once again, we're not going to really deal with the spread, I just want you to deal with the measure of center. 
And then number four, it says fill in the graphic organizer to show when to use each measure regarding the shape of the distribution. I'm just going to give you the answers to this one right now. And you all know this. When do you use the mean? When it's symmetric. Median. When it's not symmetric. Now the other two, it's not going to really be on your test as far as I know. Right now, I don't think it's a sixth grade standard. So interquartile range you use when it's not symmetric. And you use the mean absolute deviation when it is symmetric. Okay, so you're going to do one, two, and three. On the next page, um, Number five is pretty easy, and that'll be enough. If you have extra time, you can go ahead and do 10 and 11 on the other page, but I think that should keep you busy, and um, I will go around if you have any questions. Okay.